Um, today's session is meant to be an interactive format, so please don't hesitate to join the discussion round and feel free to post your questions, your comments. Um, all sessions will be recorded. I will now give you a short overview. We are a research project called Speculative Space, which is located at the Center for Design Research at HAW Hamburg. We are eight researchers coming from very different backgrounds. The main question of our research is about the epistemic potentials of speculation. We try to find out which forms of specific knowledge are produced by processes that work speculatively or from a speculative position. Speculation can question the status quo or what is believed to be something like a general truth or unquestioned knowledge. We assume that there is many possible forms of creating knowledge or insight. Embedded within this research project is this series of talks in which we search for the potentials of speculation. This is an ongoing project. We will invite different artists, scientists, researchers and designers who work in different contexts and ways with speculative tactics or approaches or fields that we find interesting within this context. The focus of the first blog is on Afrofuturistic positions. This will be followed by contributions on feminist speculation, stock exchange specialists, divination and hopefully other fields. We hope to discover links, connections and points of contact with very different fields for a speculative design practice. If anyone wants to have a long version of this introduction, you can go to speclog.xyz. I'm going to hand over. 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 Thank you, Torben. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce our today's guest, Catherine Fidis. Catherine is an interdisciplinary artist born and raised in Lenape territory, New York City, to parents from Kiskaya Haiti, Dominican Republic. And Catherine, Catherine's work and practice is mainly informed by intersectional feminist uh, theory, archival research, and earth based healing. Catherine works to reclaim ancestral technologies that have been systematically erased by drawing from multiple disciplines to unearth histories and make space for decolonial futures. Employing techniques of um, um, framing, opacity, desire, and language, Catherine works in a variety of medium, mediums, including installation, um, bookmaking, video, text, and also fabric. In her project, Botanica Cimarron, for example, Catherine has been doing plant spirit medicines, um, giving classes and more. And since Catherine went to high school for environmental studies in New York City, they became involved in all kinds of movement organizing, which is still very much a huge part of their life. For instance, Catherine is also the co-founder of Abuela Taught Me, which is an Afro Taino uh, two-spirit educational space, and a founding member of Homecoming, which is a queer and trans black indigenous people of color radical care collective that honors the path towards community healing through collective storytelling, unlearning, rebuilding and transformation in order to ultimately abolish systemic, intergenerational, interpersonal and internalized oppression. <clears throat> so today's talk entitled Ancient Futures, reviewing sacred connections with digital portals, asked about how humans can nurture emerging ways of relating for a future that regenerates our Earth connection. The imperialist capitalist way of engaging digital, digital systems acts with belief that digital reality is in a completely separate realm from the natural order, obviously. So Ancient Futures asks, how can we connect the etheric internet web to the underground mycelial web, for instance? Catherine explores these questions and more with their practice that aims to understand and transform abuses of power from the root. We're excited to hear more about that. Please welcome Catherine Felice. 
Thank you so much for that introduction, Tom. And your pronunciations are on point. They were perfect. It's so great. No one ever gets like my last name and other things. <laughs> um, thank you so much, all of you, for inviting me here today and for curating this amazing space. Um, I'm truly, really excited to, to share with you all. Um, and even if we can't be in a room together, um, IRL, um, I hope that we can um, at least like cultivate a space of exchange and of warmth. Um, and yeah, I, I also, you know, like if anyone does want to turn on their video, that would be sweet and heartwarming and just maybe like take off some of the nerve edges, <laughs> but also no pressure because, you know, surveillance capitalism is real. <laughs> um, and since we don't have a lot of time today um, and I want to leave a lot of space for like discussion and qu questions, um, I won't really be like giving an overview of my practice or, or specific projects, um, I'll just be um, talking about this concept that I've been working with called ancient f features, um, which is like really a container for a whole lot of questions and a whole lot of like imagination and um, utopic visions that I have. And um, yeah, um, feel free to also, if you have any, hi Krista, um, any questions, questions yeah just like keep them rolling um cool so ancient futures um what is ancient futures i'm um ancient futures is a concept it can also be an a new epistemology um it's also um in, in terms of like um, practical creations. I'm kind of envisioning it as a networked media, um, as like a collection of websites. Um, it's also a practice of living in relation, of living in re relation with all that is. Um, and the term just kind of like popped into my head um, at some point last year. Um, um as I was like yeah like with my preoccupations with kind of both containers of like the ancient and also the future and really um thinking of a way to 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 marry this new paradigm that's not necessarily um about moving forward and leaving the past in a rubble nor um, looking to the past um, with this like ideal to kind of um, to to go back and to, to stay there um, and I'm not gonna say that I coined the term I I'm not I'm not necessarily interested in doing that um, I also like did a google search recently and like realize that there's like other people who are also on that wave. So that's really cool, right? Because like, that's the way that ideas work. <laughs> um, like they're like not really original. Um, like we're not original. Um, we're actually like a reflection of each other. We're a reflection of all that is, right? And I think very much in my um, idea or not my idea, but like, um, in the way that I understand um, ideas to also um, come to us. Um, um, it's, it's very much an exchange between energies, um, right? So like we often attract um, that idea that um, those concepts, these, these creations that, that were meant to carry out into the world, right? Um, so maybe we're all here chosen to carry out um, in one way or another 
um, this concept of the ancient future. Um, and okay, so now let's get to what I think um, or what I'm trying to to uh, to define as like the frameworks of ancient futures in the way that I understand it. Um, one of, so there's five of them. One is intuitive knowledge. Second one is the sacred web of relations. The third one is new epistemologies. The fourth one is decolonize and reindigenize. And the fifth one is healing time. Um, and these are all kind of providing the foundation for, um, for how I'm gonna continue to, to, yeah, to shape and to be shaped by this world building technology. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just um, break down and kind of give some context to each one of these. Um, intuitive knowledge. Intuitive knowledge is really like um, the bedrock that, that kind of like um, put fire under this concept. Um, and this, this term came to me, I just started saying intuitive knowledge <laughs> um, in back in, I think it was 20, 2019, when I was working in an archive, when I was working at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, that's part of the New York Public Library in New York. Um, and I was like digging through the archives and um, piecing together parts of history to, um, to inspire curriculum writing to make sense of the past, to make sense of the present and the possible futures for young people in our community. Um, and, um, and being like the very intuitive mystic <laughs> person that I am like very much um, enmeshed in, in not only s spiritual communities, but also um, um, having like a long history of, of, of affirming my, my experiences and my connections to the unseen worlds and, um, and not necessarily um, shutting down my intuition and like my psychic visions um, and recognizing that um, this too is also real and this too is also information and um, and that it's like the most ancient <laughs> and um, and also the most um, what's the word like the most like primary source of a of a resource right um, um, something that um, our ancestors, yeah, have, have just known and have just practiced, right? So I'm also like really interested in, uh, in like the history and in the lives of heretics, um, of people who, who affirm themselves as, as having visions as having direct knowledge from God or the creator or angels um, um, and other kind of um, larger bodies of knowledge of wisdom, of infinite wisdom. Um, okay, so to circle back a little bit. So I was in the archive, right? And wanting to bring more of these perspectives in and like realize that it was very hard, like I couldn't because they weren't in the archive. Um, and because like they they just like didn't fit into this idea of what knowledge is, where it comes from, like how it's valued, all of these things. Um, and it was like really frustrating. <laughs> um, and 
um, so that's how intuitive knowledge really um, came about for me. Um, and particularly with histories related to the transatlantic slave trade. Um, after kind of like piecing together a lot of my family, or not a lot, but parts of my family history, not, not only from books and archives, but also from memory, from oral, from what remains of our stories. Um, like I've, I've come to know and to remember that I come from Maroons that that's part of um, my ancestry. But uh, yeah, like these, these stories, like our lives aren't in the archive, right? Because it's just impossible when you think about um, uh, the like colonial Western archive. Um, um, so, yeah, so I was coming up a lot against that, right? Like when I was like trying to put together this holistic, <laughs> this like fuller, this this healing perspective, not perspective, but like to breathe healing into, in, into how can we teach the transatlantic slave trade and that experience to like, to black youth um, when like you're using a colonist archive when you're using, um, when like all that remains is like slave ledgers. <laughs> like it's, it's ridiculous. It's actually really ridiculous. Um, so, um, so part of the people that, that, that I'm thinking about, for example, with um, along this line of like intuitive knowledge is people like Lisa Tesh, um, and um, and other people in my community that um, that um, not only like have taught me but like exemplify what it means to 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 really dig into the water and into like the memory of the ocean and, and into the memory that's within our bones and into um, the knowledge that's like being communicated by our ancestors, right? By like the spirits constantly, because that's where the truth lies. That's where the information lies. Um, if we like really want to get to, to the truth. Um, and the, whoa, okay. I'm looking at the time and I'm going to try and go faster so that we can, um, have a larger conversation at the end. Okay, and um, the second concept is sacred web of relation, um, which, which I, which like I just started to develop. I think a language for um, pretty recently, but um, as a concept, as an idea, it's just been like really present. Um, like forever, um, which is that like all of life is sentient, that we are all interconnected. Um, and I think it's also like a concept that is absolutely reflected in, in like all of indigenous epistemologies and um, ways of being and, and in like being in community with each other, with the land, with the uh, more than human worlds. Um, and it's, um, and it feels really exciting to me, right? Like um, when we like, I'm very excited about, um, about, um, yeah, like honoring, like worshiping the cycles of life as like the ultimate technology um, other than, I don't know, like linear systems that feel like dead and lifeless to me. <laughs> um, and this also 
um, I think is like a vestige of, of my experience in um, working in institutions and like, and, and constantly um, coming up against, um, yeah, against a wall that, um, that wasn't actually about like breathing life into the subject, into like what we were being entrusted to care for. Um, but the opposite. And um, in terms of my contemporaries, I also like want to shout out the Golden Dome School um, that's founded by Eliza Swan um, and particularly Edgar Fab Fabian Frias, who is a part of the school um, and um, does, and, and, and I think like part of their practice is actually called like the sacred web. Um, so um, they're also a, a really important, um, yeah, like contemporary guide and teach um, so like developing um, language to like understand um, the sacred web and how we're enmeshed, right? And, and, and also just like its creative possibilities. Um, so also like the symbol of the web um, of the spider web of, of being um, a link not only to other worlds, but to like seemingly disparate um, ideas and connections and stories. Like you see the web, like it's, um, it's impossible to, de to deny that they're all interconnected. Um, so I think like also seeing the spider web as a reflection for um, the possibilities of the of the of the digital webs of the internet webs uh, also feels really exciting to me. And new epistemologies, um, yeah. Um, as I've as 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 I've kind of kind of provided some context for, I've been, um, yeah, very like um, disappointed, disenchanted by um, a little <laughs> existing paradigms and epistemologies, and um, and but fine. But I've always like found hope and home in in the in. Um, in yeah I guess like diasporic community um, and particularly um, as as another contemporary I want to shout out Falek Fasa um, who's a dear friend of mine and also a really amazing artist um, and we've talked a lot about like what it means to create new epistemologies um, as kind of like as as both, um, what's the word, like displaced um, diasporic be 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 beings who are like, we're piecing together um, the power and like the technologies of, of our ancestral paths while, while at the same time, like all that we can really do is like recreate um, because like we're tasked with um, with being in this like in this liminal space where 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 we're not fully part of one world or the other, um, so um, yeah, it's kind of like um, the magic of the trickster. It's it's both like the pain of not belonging and like the joy. Uh, and like the creation of like not belonging and 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 in that there's like there's just like the newness there's there's the emergence of of this um separate paradigm that happens and um the fourth framework is decolonize and re-indigenize um, which, uh, yeah, I think it's like pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely no way around it. Like, 
um, we must decolonize. We have to decolonize if we truly um, want to uproot the toxic systems um, and like and seed a more um, yeah like a balanced healing future um, and present that I think is very much possible. So. Um, yeah, to colonize, um, which can, which, which is also, of, of course, like to colonization, um, it's like, I feel like it's entered the, um, the academy in so many different ways that I think, um, I don't know, it feels like, um yeah i don't know like i think um it's unfortunately been like diluted in in its power um but i like want to affirm that <clears throat> like it also includes um returning land and resources and providing like reparations and and ensuring that um, indigenous communities um, continue to um, to have sovereignty um, and continue and can have also like um, yeah like all over the world um, there are land defense and land protection projects um, happening that. Um, yeah, deserve to be um, just like their norm. <laughs> and um, re-indigenizing, um, I think that, um, yeah, that's also maybe, I can't really go too, too much into it because of timing, um, but a lot of, this work, um, um, yeah, it's 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 absolutely informed by my work with Abuela t -t 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 taught me when um, Cleopatra Tata Veli and I started it in about um, I think it was like twenty fifteen now twenty sixteen um, we didn't have spaces where um, that like where we felt safe and um, affirmed to to really like um, to practice our indigenous spiritualities and to be in community with others to like to heal those wounds as well. Um, yeah, so it's it it just if it, it's absolutely really sacred and personal to me um and um yeah and it also i think links with this um with this idea of time not being linear and really um, time being circular. So th there's also the Sankofa concept of like, you must go back to retrieve what you left behind. Um, and <clears throat> so that's also another context for that. Um, and the fifth framework is healing time. Um, and I think also with like the way that I'm thinking about ancient features, um, I'm not necessarily like interested in, in, in the in like shaping the the near future or like 
the near past. I'm interested in, in answering in, in asking these larger questions really as like a practice of, of, of expansion, of like expanding our paradigm, our relationship to time, like beyond beyond the, let's say a hundred year lifespan of, of a human being, like um, expanding our perception of time to, to be deeper and to be in like relation with the bones of the earth, to be in relation with like the gaseous matter of the stars, to be in relation with, with like, um, with the strands of DNA, it's like um, it's like maybe that's that that can feel impossible, but I think that's what feels um, exciting, right? Is 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 that time itself um, is is also like what we're working with, right? Time itself also needs our healing. Um, because we've like constricted time so much. We've, um, we've like not only um, severed the, the tendons and like the different webs and like it's different iterations and possibilities and like connections in, 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 in our current like very binary, very like linear, very like textbook idea of of like time and relationship. Um, so that's also another um, I think framework is 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 that in this practice we can also heal our relationship with time. We can also heal um, the nature of like time itself and. Um, and and it's also healing time. It's also time to like heal ourselves and each other. Um, and hmm. And in terms of um, moving forward with with this with this um, maybe project, <laughs> maybe lifelong project, um, but. Um, concept, I started to envision building um, a, a network of, of websites. And, um, and uh, let's see, how should I talk about it? So networked media and sacred earth sites. Um, so this really started as like, as, as a way to start envisioning like how to ground, how to ground this web, like how to physically ground it. Um, not that it already isn't, like not that it's, is, it isn't already in like the ocean floor, for example. <laughs> um, but maybe it's also about like um, grounding our relationship to it um, so I'm interested in, in what can it, what can, yeah, like how can we activate um, sacred earth sites via, um, let's say like the digital web. Um, and that's still very much a developing project that's like in the baby stage. Um, but yeah, maybe I can answer more questions about that later on. Um, cool. Um, okay, I do have some questions for y'all, maybe before, uh, before I get some questions from you. Um, okay, I have two questions. Um, so I think about a lot about connection and about, um, so if the essence of, of love, let's say is like connection, right? And boundaries is a dance that, that we're doing. Um, 
to then like ultimately connect in a way. Um, what are the boundaries of the digital and what are the boundaries of the earth? So if anyone has any thoughts on that, I can also type it in the chat. I have some thoughts. Um, hi, Catherine. <laughs> uh, so for me, the boundaries and like this was actually kind of a question I was thinking about while you're talking is really around um, materiality. And for me, when I think about connecting to things, I have to really connect in like a material way, like with water, having my hand in the water or my body in the water with like working with like clay being in clay you know and I think the hard thing when you're transferring it to like a digital realm is how to transfer that experience um that embodiment that materiality kind of it goes back to that like intuitive knowledge um that I feel with materials so that's kind of the difference but I think that the interesting part is like these like <clears throat> uh underwater like network cables how we connect to the internet and the internet being a very material realm as well but yeah i don't have the merging of it yet you know um so yeah <laughs> well, i would maybe add that um the well, there's not really a boundary between the digital and, and, the, and the earth, because what seems to be two separate realms are, are, are very much maybe like hybrid, because, I mean, there's no virtuality without material. I mean, it's in the cables, it's in the, it's in the networks, it's in iron, it's in, so, you know, there's not, it's not really, it, it's a digital world and it's the earth world, it's more and then there's also maybe the dream world and all of those worlds are interconnected. I, I would like to uh, say and turn on my camera just for this. Uh, it, it's, in, it's interesting, I think that boundaries as a word, kind of like care seem very contentious for me. Um, and, and that is because I'm wondering if boundaries as a concept are based on a, on a fake dichotomy of the outside versus the inside, which is also potentially a legacy of this imperialistic cartographical view of the world, right? Um, maybe in a lot of indigenous, and, and I, I do come from an indigenous culture, but I'm very far away from it. I'm not claiming it. But for me, it is very interesting to sort of like when I notice uh, the way that my family, especially the elders in my family talk about the rural areas that there are, right? The border uh, was a means for you to know, hey, this is going here, this is going there, this is going there. It was never to sort of like separate yourself from the outside world. Uh, and so um, that I have a very strong reaction to it uh, also because I've been, uh, having relationship issues recently and there's a lot of talk about care and boundaries etc uh, and that is something that I wanted to to sort of like also raise to to the point because it seems very very contentious to me and I'm wondering when do when when do boundaries turn into borders and what are we keeping out and what are we keeping in if we assume that the concept of intimacy and relationship uh, it's not it's not just, it's not such, so much an exchange between two people, but the creation of a third space. And if that third space is kind of like a demilitarized zone uh, by some sort of boundary, then where are we actually meeting each other as people? Can I react to this? <laughs> yeah. I was also just thinking, I love how you um, described that um, the way our mind works is also 
formed by the images that we have been brought up with. Um, so, and thinking from outside from the healing context, I really like to go with the understanding of a boundary, not as like something that defines an inside or an outside, but more defines how I would like to be treated or maybe um, my demands rather, or like you're um, entering a space where maybe where I would like you to engage not like I want to don't want to use the word rules but it's like a lack of a better word um but I want you to engage with my rules or like or it's, yeah I like to understand boundaries also as a sort of invitation rather than um a cartographical like mark or something like that Did I kill your vibe now, Jorge? <laughs> With that answer. Oh no, not at all. I mean, no, no, but it, but that is exactly it, right? And and as a caveat, I think that Betty and I know each other well, and um, there's there is a concept that I me personally wanted to think about. Uh, I I work a lot with, well, I work within the environmental space, right? So thinking about multi-species relations, etc. Uh, but an area that I've been thinking about, particularly in Berlin, where like there's a lot of hedonism, and let's face it, a lot of people are connected to some of these spaces, is like uh, I was thinking of, of of what does it mean to be intersensual? Uh, if there is a political and social utility for you to allow yourself to be cared by somebody, that is as important as you caring for somebody else, because that invitation for somebody to show care, to engage their senses, their intuition more of the somatic wholeness of who they are is a very important political tool. That is how we form bonds. Um, and so that is the context I think of a house of, of how I've been thinking about boundaries. Wow, yeah. Um, not sure if there's anyone else that wanted to jump in, but um, yeah, I'm sitting with what all of you said, like really um, great things. Wow, I wish I could have more time to like dive into it. <laughs> um, yeah, I made some notes and um, yeah, this, this, um, this notion about boundaries is, is, um, something that I like thought about that I of course like think a lot about and particularly in like relation to ancient f features was um, was was like spending yeah it was kind of like mulling over like okay like what are the boundaries of like the sacred to you know like when when um, um, in, in terms of like defining a sacred site um, because like all like everything is sacred all land is sacred um but then also like the boundary of like designating a sacred like has 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 also been created right um in, in terms of like cycles of like migration to like to holy sites for example or like the need to to consecrate um um a geographical area for um for conservation um and so on and so forth but um yeah and in in this concept of like borders um i i like the thought of like of of it being an invitation um because <laughs> um, i also see like the possibilities of or like boundaries and like borders I don't, like I don't think it's necessarily like the right word but like the boundaries and like really in the context of like relationships as, as like being porous um as in like um as in um yeah like we can't completely merge and like they're also um I think is is like important for it for there to be some sort of um of yeah of like a container um 
and how boundaries um, or like borders when they're defined by fear, um, when they're defined by, by worry, but mostly fear and hatred um, can, um, yeah, like actually become like really harmful and toxic. And now I feel like I'm maybe like going on another topic, but I hope that maybe answered one of the questions. There were a lot of questions that I didn't write down. Okay. I'm also really particularly um, inspired right now about the intersensual aspect that I think that that like you and Jorge kind of bring up together like um and there and I see some connection between relationships and maybe translation of different sentient beings kind of yeah but I had some questions about epistemologies if you want to pick up on them I put them in the chat um what oh, is it it's a lot it's a the long bubble it's like <laughs> Um, uh, so how can we explain this? How do you know that your bones have memory and that the water has memory too? Or how can we describe the, or how would you describe an epistemology of decolonized spirituality or an epistemology of sentient beings? This is like all thoughts that you have triggered now during this conversation. That's big, big complicated questions. <laughs> I just want you to say it in one sentence. How would you say that? <laughs> but yeah how would you like to engage with this um yeah um i think like the simplest to its answer is that i know it in my bones like i just i just know <laughs> um yeah and maybe that's also like the crux of like yeah of, of like the speculation is 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 like understanding that there's like value to putting language to like, to what you know. Um, yeah, so um, for example, like knowing that water has memory, like there's definitely, you know, I guess like scientific articles that I could reference that, you know, are that like talk about like water's response um, to like the vibration of, of language and like speech patterns and kind of like different messages and other things. But um, yeah, this knowing I think is, um, yeah, just very like rooted in my experience of like, of being in this body and being in this earth and like memory and dreams. Um, in, in, in my ancestral cosmology, like we come from the water and we go back to the water and water is also a medium that like, that I, that I, through which like my spirit enters to access um, what in, what in some, what some people call the Akashic records, um, which is like a kind of a new age term, but um, yeah, I think a lot of ancient futurist work is also kind of grounded in like, or yeah, interested in like bringing, yeah, and like rounding out some of that knowledge through accessing the Akashic records. And like, for me, it, 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 it happens through water. So it's like an experience that I can't like define because like like how like I don't know how I can define like my um yeah my extra sensory experiences but um those are all really great questions and I'm gonna copy and paste them somewhere else thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> Very shortly, I would I would like to uh, ah your cat. Uh, I would like to recommend a, a movie. I, I'm I'm thinking of um, whilst you were telling, or actually two movies by 
um, a, a Chilean a filmmaker called Patricio Guzman, and one is called uh, uh, Nostalgia de la Luz, um, and the other one is called The Pearl Button. And especially in The Pearl Button, he combines like Chilean, Chilean history with water, um, and also speaking a lot with different people about water and what water does not only scientifically, but also spiritually, but not making not making a difference between the two. So if uh, anyone wants to watch a movie later, I, want, I wanted to recommend it based on uh, everything you just said. Wow, thank you. I would love to watch that. If you don't mind emailing me that, because I feel like I might have just spelled it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that movie is also great that you should watch it uh, because it has to do with bones and it has to do with the bones of disappeared people in Chile. The first uh, one, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's a great, great, um, yeah, great, great movie, um, Catherine. And uh, so, yeah, I was just going to mention something about boundaries. Thank you for your talk um, and for the, Maybe. yeah, for posting it. Uh, when I think about boundaries, uh, you know, between people, you think about being like, uh, you know, having a consensus, being consensual about that, right, with the other person. So then how would you be consensual with the earth or with the technology, right? You know, I, I tried to, I remember trying to like talk telepathically to some androids when I was in Japan, like to see if there was some kind of reaction or something and um it was it was strange right it was like i think there was something there i cannot explain it right now it's too too long but i i do believe that there's like a lack of uh uh of consensus with the earth uh you know based on how we're trained right we don't we just go and cut chop wood and that that's it right there's no dialogue so i think that you know i draw a lot from indigenous epistemologies so this is all uh, very important information from that started. Uh, I mean, I did a, a thesis about this, but I would recommend everyone to look at Linda Tuhiwai Smith's work. And she wrote a book called Decolonizing Methodologies, right? That spearheaded, you know, a lot of this uh, talk about decolonization, but then it went further on. It went further on. That was just like a platform for people to understand the problems. Uh, then later on, uh, you know, what they continued to do, these scholars, was uh, talk about uh, more directly about the indigenous epistemologies, right? So everything that you're talking about with like a non nonlinear time and things that we have uh, that yeah, sometimes it's hard to to talk about that because there's nothing set up for that in our culture, and especially because everything that we know uh, in in our indigenous lineages has been um, yeah is stigmatized or you know even texts have been like in Mexico school libraries of codices were burned down, right? So so what are we drawing from? And I think that we have that memory in our DNA. So I do think that this work on, on the bones, right? Like bone marrow <laughs> going into that is, is dialoguing with that, you know, dialoguing with the earth more, dialoguing with the places that we hold sacred. You know, I, I remember doing that in Germany, like even going to the to some some uh, parks where I train and talking to the trees or you know, like you know, feeling feeling what that place would tell me. Uh, because I think it's also the boundaries are within us as humans you know, in our culture. Like that's the main boundaries. I don't see the earth having those boundaries. The earth is like so infinite, you know? So it can be intersexual, it can be ecosexual, it can be like everything. But we're, we're the ones that are holding back, right? Because we're so trained in, in um, our kindergartens to be already classified in certain ways. So yeah, that's what I just wanted to say that I, I feel that there's an infinite, infinite uh, way of relating, but we are, we are the ones that need to break out of our own boundaries. And how do we do that? 
right? How do we untrain ourselves from um, all of the education that we've received that's very limiting? Um, and so, so yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Now I have to unmute myself. Do you hear me? Yeah, good. <laughs> so thank you. I, I was going to ask, um, I was going to refer to a couple of your other projects, but I waited because I didn't, really didn't want to interrupt um, this discussion, which is um, actually referring to your today's talk. So if there's any more questions which, um, which is referring to uh, Catherine's talk um please go ahead if not i i would raise my or at least one um, question i do have to go to class actually so oh. i can't stay for much longer but um feel free to like email me like anyone can email me or get in touch um, in any way if you have any questions or um, anything that you want to share um, I'm open and yeah, really thank you all so much. Um, thank you so much for this exchange. Thank you, Catherine. That was a uh, very, very nice. Um, um, thank you for taking us on a journey tonight. It was very um, cool to have you here. Um, so um, yeah, it's another time for a virtual um, applause <laughs> to you. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Also, um, also big thank to the audience. Um, thanks for joining us uh, tonight, and we hope to see you again in one or more um, of our next sessions. If you haven't done yet, um, please check out our website, Spanglog XYZ, and of course also tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your uh, students. Um, this is still an open point, so you're more than welcome to join us in the next um, sessions. So hopefully. See you all um, next sessions, probably in January still, um, because um, the talk by a Black Lion hasn't um, been confirmed yet. We don't know yet, but um, so if this uh, if it takes place, it will probably most probably be in January. Otherwise, the next talk will be by Intelligent Mischief on February second. So we'll be on that. Um, now we leave you. Um, you can go to class now. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, definitely stay in touch and um, share thoughts in future. Thanks, everyone. Good, uh, goodbye and good luck. <laughs>